Say hello to the camera, Pete. What's up, y'all? I never thought I would end up living here. But I also didn't think of being a wheelchair or that I'd be a poet. Every day we're rolling. Oh, and I definitely didn't think I'd be a filmmaker. And there has been news breaking by the hour. About the novel coronavirus outbreak spreading across the world. Nursing homes scrambling to increase safety protocol. We're going to need medical capacity on a scale we've never seen in the history of New York City before. The Kohler facility on Roosevelt Island, it is being immediately brought back online. I've been filming everything inside. All of us been filming. I'm pissed off that we're like the forgotten ones. I observed yesterday ambulance at the ambulance at the ambulance, bringing people in and out. Corona, Corona. You had me confused and confined. They put a patient in my room, and he's telling me that he got the virus, and I got underlying conditions. Like, these people don't care. If this was an all-white nursing home, this would never happen. How long do you think it'll take before everybody in the damn place is infected? But to me, that's like throwing me in a goddamn lion's den and closing the gate. How do you sleep at night knowing that you're responsible for so many people dying here? You and I should have a conversation, all right? Welcome to Colin Max Prison, run by people who lack any vision. I don't think our mental health is looked after. My God. A nursing home is ground zero, but it just takes one person with a virus, and then it is fire through dry grass. Will I survive through these hard times? Or will I become a victim of this silent killer? They say nobody knows, but somebody always knows something. Now, if this is being read after my departure, just know I fought. Nursing home! Nursing home! Murder, murder. For my soul, I didn't let the devil capture. I still get goosebumps when I see that trailer. And of course, I've seen the whole documentary. Um, <clears throat> welcome, everybody. My name's Lee Keylock. I'm the director of global programs for Narrative 4. And I'm really excited today because I get to hang out with one of my favorite crew of people, the Open Doors reality poets, who are much more than uh, just poets. And we've known the um, this crew for about eight years now. And I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But the... Um, the first thing is I want to tell you a little bit about what they do uh, before they introduce themselves. First of all, um, as the trailer alludes to, they are the founders of Nursing Home Lives Matter, which is a, um, a movement to sort of uh, fight for a healthcare system that, that protects all um, people living in nursing homes, um, but also especially black and, and brown people. The, um, the other thing is they, they are... Uh, they're poets, they run an anthology, which um, we'll put the link in later on into this workshop. They run a poetry anthology called Wheeling and Healing, and you are all invited to submit your uh, creative art pieces. This is going to be an interactive workshop, so maybe you'll create your piece of art right here. Um, they run uh, Freestyle Fridays, which is a virtual hangout for, for artists and activists involved in sort of a lot of social justice movement. It's an open invitation to anybody. If you if you uh, sign up with the, or register with the Open Doors Poets, you will get newsletters about all of these. Um, there is a Guns Down Mic Up, which is something that Vincent uh, runs. And it's really an open mic conversation for anybody that has been involved in in any sort of gun violence or gun violence prevention work. And of course, they are here because today, at least, we're going to be talking about their new documentary, which um, which has many, many um, amazing sort of critical acclaims to its name, and it's only been out for a, for a couple of months, um, Fire Through Dry Grass, which is what we're going to be talking to them um, about today. So my name is Lee. I'm very, very happy to welcome the open door poets here. Uh, I first met this crew when about eight years ago, when I was working in New York City and Narrative 4 was working on a project called Guns and Empathy. And it was a project where we wanted to present to, at least to the American public, a more nuanced conversation around gun violence and, and gun violence prevention in the US. Um, 
the Open Door Reality Poets were invited to join us for that endeavor. So that was our first encounter. And we've been friends ever since. They are also an integral part of working with our youth in, in and around the South Bronx in New York. And we they work specifically with the field exchange students, which is where a program where we, we bring two diverse populations together who never have a chance to meet and to create, um, get to know each other, foster empathy and sort of create civic engagement projects together. So I've known them for a long time. Um, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to pass the mic straight to my good friend, Pete, who's I believe is going to read a poem and start the introductions. Thank you, Lee. Thank you for that great introduction, man. You know, like open doors and narrative four was like love at first sight. So yeah, we've been together for a while. Yeah, uh, my name is Peter Yearwood. I am a uh, open doors reality poet. I'm also co-producer on the film, which some of you might have seen, if not all of you all have seen. Um, and I'm talking to you guys from the land of the uh, uh, Lenape people, what are known as Roosevelt Island in New York City. And um, I have a poem I want to read for you guys. Um, actually, one of our brothers was supposed to be here. He was supposed to do this poem, but um, he got, he wasn't able to be here today. Um, he had an emergency, so we want to wish him well. Make sure he's okay. So I'm going to read this poem. I just wrote it. The ink is not even dried yet, you know, so I'm going to give it to you guys in its raw form. Um, here it goes. Leave me alone. I want to be free from being told how to live my life by rules, regulations, laws, bylaws, loopholes, rat holes, and assholes. Let me be free to make the decisions that best serve me. Who died and left you in control of my life anyway? Every day I had to plan my day around your life, the way you see fit to participate. With no regards on how it affects the, the masses, we just count our losses. I want to be free from all the politics. This is supposed to be a free land. Why is it that I feel oppressed, controlled, like my life don't matter? The I's have been dotted and the T's have been crossed. They, inf they inform me of changes as a formality because no matter how I cry out for justice, you say, this is common practice. Rise up my people and follow N NHLM so we can all have the last word. Peace. Thank you. That's me being frustrated at the system. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe you can pass the mic to one of your colleagues. Yeah, um, I will pass it to Francine. Hi, everyone. My name is Francine Benjamin. I'm an Open Door member and a reality poet. I'm also the president of our resident council here at Cola. I'm wearing a black and white blouse, a cap, a glasses, black and white blouse and black pants. And I pass it on to Jay. Hello, everybody. My name is Jay. I'm an Open Doors member and reality poet. And I'm also the co-director of our film, Fire Through Jack Ross. And I'll pass it on to Teresa. Hi, hello, my name is Teresa. Um... I have on glasses, my hair is braided, and I have on a long sleeve red shirt. I'm an open doors member, and I pass it on to Alex. Hey, I did not expect to be introducing myself. Um, <laughs> I'm not one of the reality poets, but some of y'all may have met me before. I'm the associate director of Open Doors. Happy to be here and support the team. I have a lot of love for Narrative 4. Y'all are a tremendous friend and community partner to us. So, you know, thank you for hosting us and having us. Felice, thank you for being on our eboard. Um, Lee, thanks for tickets to the 10 year. Yeah, no, y'all are just, you know, um, got a lot of love for Narrative 4. Y'all are rock stars, so. And I guess, you know, and yeah, I'm not going to drag about Paso Tizana for doing all the whole team members. So. Okay, fine. <laughs> Hi there. Um, I'm Zana. I use they and she pronouns. Um, I am uh, in Portland, Oregon, um, on the, the intersection of the Columbia and Willamette Rivers, where um, many uh, Indigenous communities have lived and continue to live, um, including the Chinook um, and the Kalapuya and the Multnomah. 
Um, and I am the uh, associate producer for Fire Through Dry Grass and then on the impact team um, with a bunch of folks here and a bunch of other folks. Um, so it sort of helped put this event together. Uh, and then I've also done some other comms work for Open Doors, um, yeah, in the past and continue to um, through my current role. Um, and I think that's everything about me. Uh, I'll pass it back to, I think that was everyone, right? So I think I'll pass it back to Felice Early. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So look, we're here to talk about a lot of things. We have a, we have a captive audience right now, right? And um, we know where everyone's zooming in from, which is great. We're all over the all over the US, especially. And I noticed there are some uh, in Mexico in the in the crowd too. So feel free to field your questions, put them in the chat box as well as we go. But I have some questions ready to go. Um, you know, when it's when I'm thinking about all of the work that um, as artists that the Open Doors reality poets have been up to, um, most recently this documentary. Um, I've, I have to go back and I think about what James Baldwin um, always said about artists. And he said, artists are here to disturb the peace, which I, I love this, um, you know, I love this quote. And I'm asking any one of you to sort of react in the context of your own lives and your own documentary that you uh, just released, react to that quote disturbing the peace. Not exactly. I'd like to react to that quote with another quote. And this is a quote from the poet Ardra Lord. She says, uh, taking care of myself is not self-indulgence. It's self-preservation. And that is an act of political warfare. You know, considering that most of the stuff that, that we went through and are still going through is highly political. You know, um, we 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 constantly have to be knocking on on, on people's doors, you know, and electors' doors, you know, and trying to get results. And so far, it's been almost futile, you know. Um, but we're not we're not about to quit with this. We're about to keep going. You know, um, when we have we have um, great great people to work with, you know, like Narrative Four. You know, we have great partners like Narrative Four. You know, some other partners that we have since then, Valid. You know, uh, Grey Panthers. Uh, so, yeah. Somebody else want to pick it up. Yeah, that's open to any of you, too. I love, Pete, that you're such a poet. You, you, I give you a quote and then you quote me back. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to put that in there. <laughs> One thing I would add, like you were talking about taking care of yourself or, or, or the quote that you referenced, taking care of yourself is an act of, you know, well, an act of self-preservation, right? Taking care of. But I also think it's taking care of others, because when I think about um, your movement, Nursing Home Lives Matter, this is not just about um, your group that sort of started this uh, COLA health, you know, residential sort of healthcare center, chronic care facility um, out on Roosevelt Island. You, um, you're actually, you all have a much larger vision, right? This is not just about a select crew on the island. This is about all lives, all nursing homes, like many of us are headed in that direction, hopefully, right? At some point that we, we can be taken care of. So maybe you want to speak to um, the movement that became beyond just the, the sort of four walls of Roosevelt. We started the, uh, well, Vincent actually started the Nursing Home Lives Matter movement inspired by Black Lives Matter movement. Um, when we were going through all this, all this stuff, the lockdown and and the quarantines and all that, um, and nursing home lives matter. What nursing home lives matter is trying to do is to build a, a, a healthcare system, you know, that protects the rights, the rights of uh, of all residents in, in in all nursing homes, not only the residents but the workers also. Um, so, and you know, uh, in order to do that, in order to do that, we have to we have to um, really uh, get into a lot of nursing homes. We we need a lot of nursing home partners on board with this. We need other nursing homes to come out and and join this movement. Yeah, you know, one thing also is that um, after the pandemic, our mission changed because it wasn't about us anymore. We started wondering, you know, if the same thing that was happening to us over here was happening to people in other nursing homes. And we started reaching out. And it was actually worse than us. So that's when we got into, we engaged into a new mission, which is 
um, preservation for everybody, helping everybody, making sure that everybody in all nations are okay and they're living their life happy and have the things that they need. Yeah, thank you for that. And, you know, I was I was thinking a lot about the, the title of your documentary, um, Fire Through Dry Grass. And actually, if uh, for those of you that saw the trailer or watched the, the film, you know, that was a direct quote, right, from from the then New York governor uh, Cuomo. And you sort of pulled his own words and you used that as a reference uh, as a title for your piece. So I'm hoping that some of you can talk about your reaction to you know, what the politicians were doing at the time and also why that title? Uh, well, okay. On my part, anybody else can speak about this, but me, um, this title came up because of Jenny Lee. Jenny Lee saw the interview with Cuomo. She thought about it and pitched it to us. And then we realized that that was, that was the perfect title for the film because we are like dry grass. We are sick people. We live in an NC home. And, and the COVID pandemic is like a fire. So if that would have been in here, it would have burned like it did. It wouldn't burn those quick and completely. And um, a lot of us did got um, COVID. Thank God some of us were already vaccinated when this happened. So nothing else happened. But a lot of people died here. A lot of people that we know, a lot of our friends, a lot of people that we used to spend our days with every day died because of COVID. They just were taking from us and we, we couldn't even get to see them because um, they were uh, confining us to our units. They wouldn't let us come out. So the, we, we couldn't even go to people's rooms and be like, oh, are, you, are you okay? You need anything? They, they, we just heard because of nurses who come to our uh, units and tell us, oh, somebody, this person died, that person died. And then we were like, oh my God, no, don't tell me that. It was really hard for us, really emotional. Yeah, and that comes. Maybe, to... maybe Francine might want to talk a little bit more about this. Yeah, uh, all these deaths hit us a low blow. Our friends that was a part of the group, they they passed on, and I reached a point. I think I told Pete, "No more, please don't call me to say nobody else die. It's it's too much for us." You know, and knowing they didn't have enough PP and they lied about stuff, no proper information was given. You ask questions and you get nowhere. So it's been a very, very tough situation for us. We're still going through some of it and we're hoping that we can reach higher grounds with this. You know, other other nursing home, as Jay said, suffered, suffered as well, even more than us, you know. But we're we're doing our best to get it reached far and wide that, that the world could know what, what what goes on in nursing homes. Thanks, Francine. You you said that it was, you know, it's really hard, it was really hard for you during that, and that comes through very loud in the documentary. Um you know, I, I think about the pandemic a lot. Um, recently, we work in a lot of schools and communities, and it's the one thing that actually the world has in common, right? That we all went through a pandemic together in real time. Um, the context might be different, right? For certain people, different environments, et cetera. But that is one thing that we can draw strength from is that we all have a shared experience. Um, and one of the questions I have for you is how, you know, you say it was hard for everyone, but how do you not lose hope when you were showing up? How do you show up for this work, right? Every day, this sort of activism from within um, the Cola Center, putting your documentary out, trying to start a movement during a pandemic. I mean, these are lofty things. How do you not lose hope and how do you show up for this work on, the, on a daily basis um, amidst all of the sort of pain? Well, these guys... These guys are my hope. They are my family. I draw strength from them. I always say to them, even if I don't feel good, I'm driving, I'm trying joining the live because I get strength from them. And just by showing up, you know, everybody wants to know, are you okay? Are you in need of anything? Can I provide anything for you? So we were just like a, a, a it was a big extended family that you know you didn't have and you have a family within the walls that you are and prayer I am a Christian woman 
pray is what got me through. My church was praying and I had other people praying for me and praying for us. So I know that Jehovah would not just leave us um, just here to die. We are stronger than that and we draw strength from each other. So that's how we were able to pull through. Yeah, you know, another thing is that before the pandemic, we used to meet in person. But after the pandemic, since we were confined to our units, we started a virtual hang, you know, like, like a virtual meetings. On Tuesdays, our community council, and on Fridays, Freestyle Friday. So that's how we kept together. We kept calling each other every morning. You know, it was about really finding something to do because we are in a hospital unit, only able to go from your know, room to the day room, which is kind of like the hangout spot in the unit. Um, and that's it. So we needed to keep busy. We needed to maintain ourselves busy. So everybody started doing a little project here on the side. And then um, when we started doing, making fire, everybody had always something to do, you know, for fire. So everybody was always busy doing something, communicating with each other, communicating with their family, which is also very important. And that's how we made it through because we kept together as a family. You know, we care about each other. We want everybody to do good. And we just kept talking to each other every day and making sure that everybody was okay. Uh, I think one of the other things that, that keeps us going, that, that makes us keep doing this work is that um, everyone that, that we have come in contact with, you know, that Open Doors has come in contact with, they have had nothing but positive things to say about the work we do here. Um, it's, it's like, we're not where we want to be yet, you know, but... Um, the only way we can get there is if we keep moving. You know, we can't we, we can't be disappointed. We can't we can't lose faith. You know, we, we just gotta keep keep going because I and I know the rest of my my team do also truly believe in this work that we're doing. This is necessary work. You know, it's you know it's necessary trouble that we need to get into. You know, so um, yeah, I I think just from the support that we get from from the public at large. It is one of the things that keep us going. I think so, hope is okay. our only I think hope is our only option, you know, because if we don't have hope, what else do we live for? Hope is what motivates us, keeps us going. Yeah, and you know, hope, I, I hear that word bandied around a lot, you know, this idea of hope. But to me, hope is very visceral. It requires boots sort of you know, action steps and, uh, you know, boots on the ground, people actually doing the work, right? You can't just hope for something that's just going to happen. Um, I'm wondering if you can, you can talk about the, the types of steps you, uh, or that you put into play once you realize, okay, we're going to, um, like Vince, there's a quote in the, in the movie where Vince says, we're going to expose these individuals. I won't use the word he actually used, but he's like, we're going to, it's time to expose these individuals. Right. And sort of, um, you know, start the fire, right, Pete, like you're saying. So what were some of the concrete steps that you actually did to go from, from zero to 100? What were some of those incremental steps? Because it gets overwhelming other, otherwise against this machine, right, of the government or whatever institutions are in place. Man, I, I will I'll answer the question in this context that I would say that we were lucky to begin with because we... We had uh, we we had known so many good people already on the island. Our the community, this community on Roosevelt Island played a really really, you know, uh, big role in us getting to where we are. Ooh. You know, we, some of the stuff that we took, you know, there there was a classic tons of emails being sent out to electeds. You know, the um, our voices and the voices from the community. You know, um, they had a lot of connection with 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 with, with politicians. You know, and once the word started getting out there, you know, people started showing up. You know, we had Gail Brewer was in that march that you also in the in the in the um in the in the trailer. You know, uh, Carolyn Malone has been here. You know, uh, so I th I think you know community played played a really really you know uh, big part in us getting getting this thing off the ground. Yeah, community is is uh, fundamental. Um. I'd like to ask, you know, the film itself is um, there are some really powerful themes throughout the movie, right, around sort of 
racial justice, disability justice, justice for all. Um, there's a real sort of activism that pervades the entire documentary. But also it's a beautiful documentary. It's a beautifully filmed documentary. Um, I'm wondering if any of you can speak to the artistry of the movie, the sort of the poetry, the graphics, the animation, the music, all of the, the other pieces that make this a, 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 an incredible documentary. Yeah, like I said earlier, um, everybody had a part in the movie. Um, actually, my co-director, Alexis Neofitidis, um, which I met a few years ago. We were working together for years. Um, she actually don't really do animation. So since I do animation, we spoke about it, and we hired an animator from Argentina, which was actually in a, in a film that won an Oscar. Uh, we thought he probably wasn't going to be available. He was available, thank God. And we were able to hire him and work with him. I worked with him personally to do all the animation. And since we are we are poets, we already have a lot of poems. Um, and we were writing poems about um, the pandemic at that time. So we just took everybody's poems from the pandemic and we put some of them in the film. Um, maybe some of the other guys want to speak about this too. But I think the art in that movie was just the gravy and the rice. <laughs> yeah, because when it comes to art, man, I mean, I don't think there's any any better way of experiencing realness. You know, things that come from the heart. It's just, it's just soul. When you sit there, when I sit down to write something, you know, and I'm pretty sure most poets or 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 or, or other you know rappers. Or whatever your art might be, that whatever you're doing, right, it, it, it's something that 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 you know to be true. It's not, it, it's your truth. It's what you know to be true, and it, and it comes from the heart. It comes, it's, it's, it's that realness, you know, that 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 that, that make art that that art gives to to anything that you impose it on, you know. Well, this is the perfect transition to art creation. <laughs> I know that anything that we try and do when there's a when there's a boatload of artists in the room is to create together, right? And I believe that, um, that is it you, Pete, that's gonna lead us through a sort of creative- uh, Yeah, this uh, is, uh, yeah, this is the fun part. This is the part I love the most, I love the part. This is the create, creative part of the program. Um, I believe we have some props in the in the chat, guys. So we, we're gonna, um, we're gonna ask you guys to be creative today, right? You all can do whatever you want. You can write a poem, you can write a song, you can do a dance, you know, um, whatever whatever um, art you wanna bring, whatever art you wanna be creative with today. Um, we'll give you guys 10 minutes to do that. Um, like I said, there's some prompts, uh, some prompts in the, in the chat that you can use. Um, so, and um, we'll stay together in, in, in this main room for about 10 minutes, and then we'll go into smaller groups and, and discuss our creative process, and, and we can even maybe read whatever we wrote. Um, I believe we're all going to just share out a couple of things, right? A couple of us can share out for two or three minutes um, before we sort of get to that era of when we have to close this um, this workshop. So, yeah, anybody that would, um, I, I'll just share one thing that, both of the people that I was in the room with, Valerie and, and Shikufe, um, they are real poets, man. They I don't know how they wrote these, these beautiful, um, I don't know if it's the start of poems or, or whatever, but it was beautiful just to listen to the language and the words. So hopefully they'll get some submissions they can submit to Wheeling and Healing, which we'll give you the link to later because that's beautiful. So thank you for sharing. But anyone else would just unmute and you can talk about you know something that moved you in your little breakout space. Okay, as honest speaking, I'll do it. <laughs> um, well, I just, um, I won't name names in case people don't want to, but we talked about, um, but feel free to put yourself in the chat if you want to. Um, we talked about sort of overlapping um, uh, impacts of pandemic and of other issues, but also in particular, one of the folks who shared, shared about immigration and the experience of immigration and being kind of stuck in 
in one place and not having information about another, the other place where they're from. And um, at least it was outside of the context of the US, but which also was happening in the US with folks trying to talk to people outside. And, but so it was interesting to sort of think about the global context of the pandemic, because a lot of the conversations that I'm in being in the US for a long time have been about the US, but um, then I went back to the Philippines as well uh, last year and obviously there were different, it was different and the same in some ways there too. So I appreciated that global context. In my group, we, we talk about just how tough the pandemic was for all of us. Uh, Kate was in Zimbabwe, so she was able to be outside most of the time. Um, just talk about his elderly parents who, who uh, um, they open up the garage just to have some, some me time, you know, seeing them and talking to them not being really close. And um, I spoke about how the community was really dear for us. I even told them one lady did cartwheels out of my window, <laughs> was able to watch her, you know, and, and that was beautiful just to watch them wave to us. It, it, it was really powerful. Thank you. Maybe somebody could answer the question about, you know, the importance of making art in community? I would say it's art. Uh, that's how some of us get trained. Just by sitting and penning something on paper, it could be short, you know, but but, but just by sitting down and focusing, um, I think poetry is powerful and it also brings us together because that's how we start all of our meetings. We each will share a, a poem or two you know, just to get us going. So I think um, poetry is a piece of art that is 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 very good. Oh, um, it's all about family. When you have your family, you love your family, you take care of your family, and that's what we're all about, a family. Your family just grew, Jay, because now you've got another 20-something people Right, that can join join yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> well, uh -huh. look, we we have two minutes or or a couple of minutes, and I do want to wrap up. Um, I will pass the mic mic to Francine in a second just to close us out. But um, in the meantime, if you if you've seen the documentary, right, like um, Pete and Jay were saying, the work is not done. The work is not over. The, yes, the film is made. Yes, the film is out there in the universe. Yes, the work is happening, but this is a grind. This is a day-to-day -day grind. So if you feel like that you want to, to be involved, you can you can certainly follow um, Open Doors Reality Poets, right? We'll share the links. You can um, hashtag nursing home lives matter, right? You can boost the, um, boost the awareness in your own social media networks. Um, the other thing you can do is request a, a screening of the movie and... I know that um, you know the the poets, and if they can, they often send people to join the screening. So there's often a talk back, or there are some resources that can be shared to get the community talking about what's happening in the movie. Um, and the obviously the um, narrative four. We're a community that tries to to keep art and story and community alive, and you can you know follow us in everything we do we do these artist workshops every month so please follow us i think the next one is on march 27th with uh the fab malia kakia nicolini um i won't tell you anything more about her but you can you can google her and see what that's going to be about um and you know if all else fails if all of that fails join a story exchange with us we run them we run like four or five a month online we have another one coming up. Um, the link will be put in the chat. And it really is a global occasion where people from all over sort of join and share their stories. The next one's going to be um, a sort of fun topic. Uh, we had a real fun topic the last time around music. So um, Francine, first of all, before I give you the final word, thank you all for coming. Thanks for the Open Door Reality Poets. Thanks for all the work you do. Thanks for the relationship we have with you, the continued work. It's not easy um we love you guys and uh francine mike to you <laughs> thank you so much lee we appreciate you and all the hard work you do as well 
And I'll just say, this is my signature piece. Smile a while and give your face a rest. Wave your hands through the ones you love the best. Then shake hands with those nearby and greet them with a smile. Thank you. <laughs>